Hey, thank you guys for being here. Pleasure to chat with you about such a fun and entertaining and energetic film. Uh, um, <laughs> I guess we'll dive right in here. Um, Tim, I want to start with you. You've mentioned before that Jeremy's casting was an 11th hour occurrence. And God, I could not imagine anything different here. Um, can you talk a little bit about what it was that brought you that, or I guess, roped you in with Jeremy and really solidified that he was the choice to play your dad? Absolutely. Um, casting, <laughs> casting any role is impossible. Casting your father, that's a, that, that's a high bar. Um, and I, I kept casting other people, or all the other roles, and I kept kind of getting the knock you know, on my door from everybody going, probably should cast Neil. That, that's important. I said, I know, but I just haven't found the guy with the essence and not the guy who looked like him or sounded like the guy with the power, that perpetual motion machine. I always describe my father as, and, and, and there were a couple of people that, you know, that, that were interested in, and, and wanted to do it. And, um, and they were all lovely, but there was something about this power of, of this character. And it was actually Larry Mark, a producing partner. And I called him up one day, you know, just months before we we're going to start saying, I, I need that that larger than life performer. I need today's true showman. And and I finally said, "Who's the greatest guy on Broadway?" And he just said, Jeremy Jordan. I said, "I have no idea who that is." So I went on YouTube and spent all night diving down. And and the moment I saw him, I knew that that was the guy. And and the best decision I ever made in my life. Ah, oh, thanks, Tim. <laughs> Jeremy, you certainly do. Have whole, that. Apparently, I've worked my whole career for this moment. <laughs> I, I had to. I had to get enough videos on YouTube. That was it. To stay up all night and and make that decision. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Jeremy, you definitely have that energy that this role calls for uh, from beginning to end in this film. It's just a nonstop train. Um, and from a dec over a decade ago, when I saw you in Newsies to you know this role, it seems like you're always taking these passionate, energetic roles. But this is one that you were, you know, filming with the subject matter experts watching on. Um, yeah. You've you've played a few roles in the past, whether that was, um, you know, in Newsies, Jack Kelly inspired by a true individual or uh, playing in Bonnie and Clyde on Broadway. But what was your preparation like for this role? And did you approach it differently than you have in the past with other projects? Yeah, I mean, I was fully prepared to like do all the research and be as close to, you know, Neil Bogart as I possibly could be. But um, well, we were really fortunate in this um, to to have Tim not really push that kind of an energy. And so I I really was able to create a lot of things on my own. And because Tim, you know, when he cast me, really felt that and its essence and that right energy from the get-go, he was like, trust that I know it's in you and and I'm, I want you to find your version of Neil. And, uh, you know, of course I had some video that I would kind of watch. I would always watch him every day before we went to set to just kind of get his his vibe because his vibe is very different than mine. Even though he had was this perpetual motion machine, he just has this really relaxed way of of communicating with everybody, and they you just want to love him. And um, and so I really wanted to get that down. And uh, but everything else, you know, I I, I couldn't have been more supported. Um, and I never for once at, at any moment felt judged or like I had to do it perfect or like I was you know you know, not being true to the spirit of this person. And um, it was it was a really lovely environment to create something, even though it was a recreation of sorts. That's excellent. Yeah. You also have a few opportunities to jump onto some really iconic and monumental tracks here in this film. Yeah. <laughs> Such as Oh Happy Day, you have Last Day. I know. I didn't and... know I was doing any of that. <laughs> oh, That's no. not in the script. <laughs> And I, he's like, yeah, just go sing it with them. Like, go up and we're going to go sing it. With, oh, Gladys is here. Just like, just sit with her at the piano and you guys just kind of work it out together. And suddenly I'm like, I'm in all these numbers. I mean, I'm not mad about it, but it was, it was fun, you know? And, uh, you know, we, even that moment where I played Beth at the piano, like none of that's in the script. So like, um, it was exciting and, and I, it felt, it felt nice because, you know, I, I spent a lot of my career trying to like put myself out of the like guy that does musicals box. But I'm, I'm at the point where I'm like, just do what's what you're good at. Do what's fun. Do what makes you happy. Do what works. And uh, and we felt we found like a really great combination. And I realized that this guy is a showman, you know, and that's all he wanted to be. And he tried early in his career to be a singer and a dancer. And 
it, you know, it didn't work out for him in that way, but that doesn't mean that that person wasn't just inside him itching to get out at any moment that he could possibly, you know, bust out and do a song or give a <laughs> rousing speech or anything like that. Yeah, I personally loved all the musical inclusion there. And especially even the end, the uh, the greatest time original song was just such an upbeat way to end kind of a recap of what we've seen already. Um, Tim yeah. also Finning added Blue. not in the script. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a two it. weeks before. He's like, I have this idea. We don't really have time to shoot it, but we're going to do it anyways. And nobody understood what we were doing. Every day we go, oh, Pink Sweats, come over here. Oh, Wiz Khalifa, come over. Just sing this line. No one knew what we were doing. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, Tim, you had such a, it was a labor of love uh, making this film for you and your family. Uh, and it was a long road to get there. What do you hope that audiences take away from watching Spinning Gold? I, I really think the power of perseverance. And I think that that is both true of, the struggle to make the movie, but but most importantly, the remarkable life that these incredible characters live, the artists and and the and the people that supported them all had the same dreams uh, for one another and for themselves. And only through just extraordinary perseverance did they get there. And I think at every moment, uh, as the Casablanca timeline is playing out, you're going, this may not work. I know it works, but but it seems like it's not going to work. Right. And, and yeah. but for the uh, the just relentless perseverance, you don't get there. And I really hope people walk out going. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try that again tomorrow. Uh, I, I think so. Um, uh, that's what I hope they take away. Yeah. Persevere and keep dreaming. That's excellent. Jeremy, same question to you. What do you hope that people take away from the film? Well, you know, I hope they go away just humming all the tunes and, and finding a, a new appreciation for all of that old music that I'm sure so many people love. And uh, that's a great thing about these these kinds of movies is that you, you know, you you refall back in love with things again and um it's a testament to, and 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 coming back knowing uh, uh something about about neil i mean it's 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 i know for tim it's a really personal story and he's incredibly passionate about sharing his father's legacy with the world and i just feel very privileged to, to be able to help deliver that and uh watching throughout the years um you know the struggles of this getting made and then finally coming to fruition, you know, it's, there is, we all have, you know, legacies that we carry with us and we want to leave behind and, and, uh, and I want people to, to leave and, and have an appreciation for his. Absolutely. Well, I thank you both for such an incredible time with the film. Jeremy, I do have to get one question in for you with uh -oh. the news breaking this morning about Smash coming to Broadway, any involvement or any interest in being involved? Uh, no. And <laughs> sure. Maybe. I don't know. I don't I I know as much about it as you do at this yeah. point. Um, I've heard that they're taking like a departure from the show. So, I, you know, maybe they'll start from scratch. But uh, I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm spending some time with Scott Whitman in a couple of weeks. So I'll pick his. I'll, I'll see what's I'll see what the real skinny is. There you go. Had to get it in, given the timeliness. <laughs> of it. But thank you both, Tim. Thank you for such a great film as well. And I wish you the best moving forward. Thanks so much. Right. Thank you, Jay.